everybody, we've got ourselves another big thread from Carlos Osuita, this time about Benghazi. Let's get started. As Susan Rice gets more vicious in her attacks on Donald Trump, let's remind everyone what Rice and Hillary and Leon Panetta and their master, Barack Obama, did. We begin with the lie that Benghazi was started because of a YouTube video. This is the reality. Quote, staff at the U.S. Special Mission in Benghazi woke on 11 September to the site of a Libyan policeman deployed to guard them, filming the compound from a neighboring rooftop. Two days earlier, the ambassador to Libya, Chris Stevens, had received a veiled warning. According to one of his cables, one of his diplomats had a meeting with two Islamist militia leaders in which they complained that the U.S. was supporting a secular leader, Mahmoud Jibril, in a vote for Prime Minister due on 12 September. If Jibril won, they warned, they would no longer guarantee security. The consulate was already relying on one of the militias, the February 17th Martyrs Brigade, for armed protection. From the Guardian, U.S. consulate attack in Benghazi, a challenge to official version of events. Rice says that this was a spontaneous attack. No, it was a carefully planned military operation. Quote, it began around nightfall on September 11th with around 150 bearded gunmen, some wearing the Afghan style tunics favored by Islamic militants, sealing off the streets leading to the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. They set up roadblocks with pickup trucks mounted with heavy machine guns. The guard said he saw no protesters. He heard a few shouts of God is great, then a barrage of automatic weapons fire and rocket-propelled grenades began along with barrages from heavy machine guns mounted on trucks. The attack came from the front and the side. A neighbor whose house is on, so on one side of the consulate compound said militants with their faces wrapped in scarves were attacking. The effectiveness of the roadblocks was later revealed in the State Department's account of the evacuation. It described how the rescue force came under heavy fire and grenade attacks as they tried to leave the consulate area. They evacuated staffers to a security compound across town where they continued to come under fire. A precision mortar hit the compound's building at 4 a.m., killing two other Americans. From CBSNews.com, Libyan witnesses recount organized Benghazi attack. Another report shows what a liar Susan Rice is. Quote, the attack that killed four Americans in Libya, including the U.S. ambassador, was an organized two-part operation by heavily armed militants that included a precisely timed raid on a supposedly secret safe house just as Libyan and U.S. security forces were arriving. A Libyan security guard who tried to defend the compound but was wounded in the attack told CBS News correspondent Charlie Dagata it had the marks of a planned attack. It was a setup, he said. They were armed with automatic weapons. Some had their faces covered and wore flak jackets. It felt like there were hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of them. One of five private security guards at the consulate said the surprise attack began around 9.30 p.m. when several grenades that were lobbed over the outer wall exploded in the compound and bullets rained down. CBSNews.com, Libya, four arrested over coordinated attack against U.S. Back to Carlos. This was a combined arms attack by 150 terrorists, the same number of Islamic State terrorists who took the Iraqi city of Ramadi from May 14th to 17th, 2015. It's one of the largest terrorist operations ever carried out on American interests. It's bad enough that Susan Rice shifted blame from Islamist terrorists to a single American citizen. What happened during the attack shows that Obama and Leon Panetta helped the terrorists murder American citizens. 
the U.S. Armed Forces are divided into 11 Unified Combatant Commands. Six are geographical and five are functional. The geographical combatant commands each have one combatant commander's in extremis force, that's CIF, of U.S. Army Special Forces soldiers who are first responders used in emergencies. Libya is in AFRICOM, which at the time had no CIF. Okay, well, just to reiterate, CIF is a rescue force. The 10th Special Forces Group has European Command, UCOM, as its area of responsibility, area of responsibility here and after AOR. The UCOM CIF is named C1-10. When Benghazi came under attack, C1-10 was at Slunge training range in Croatia. The 84-man CIF boarded two Chinook CH-47 helicopters. The CH-47s flew from Slunge to Zagreb International Airport, which took 15 minutes. At Zagreb, C-1-10's weapons and equipment were already loaded on a C-17 Globemaster. The Globemaster could have flown the CIF to Benghazi in one hour and 50 minutes. The terrorist attack lasted eight hours. However, for reasons never explained, C-1-10's weapons and equipment were unloaded from the Globemaster and put onto two C-130 Herculeses, which then flew the CIF to Signoniella Air Base in Italy, which took 22 hours. In time-sensitive crises, the Theater Special Operations Commander, SOC, will order the CIF into action. That commander has the authority to do so. Leon Panetta stepped in, overrode the Special Operations Commander, and sent C-1-10 to Signoniella. Panetta later said that Signoniella became a staging area, and he couldn't send in any troops until he understood the situation fully. Well, a CIF doesn't require a staging area, and the reason they exist is to go into unknown situations. Panetta clearly and deliberately delayed the CIF until he was sure that there was no point in sending it at all. And he was covering up for Obama. And in order for any American military unit to go on a combat mission into a foreign country uninvited, the president must give a verbal and written cross-border authority, CBA. The president prepares it as soon as the unit is alerted. Obama never issued a CBA for a rescue mission. That means he had no plans to save anybody. He helped terrorists murder J. Christopher Stevens, Sean Smith, Tyrone S. Woods, and Glenn Doherty. This is the man for whom Susan Rice sold her soul. There's a lot more about Benghazi that has never been answered. Tyrone S. Woods and Glenn Doherty were using a laser target designator when they were killed. That means a gunship was overhead but didn't fire. There are two possibilities. One is that the gunship was ordered to not fire which is terrible but understandable given the gutlessness of military leadership under Obama. The second possibility is much, much worse. A laser target designator uses an invisible beam that can be seen with night vision goggles. You use it to show a gunship where to shoot. The beam is invisible to the naked eye, but terrorists use the night vision function on their cell phones to see the beam. If they can see the beam, they can trace it back to the source. Then they fire on the source. That's what they did at Benghazi. They fired mortar rounds that made direct hits. Because using a laser designator is dangerous, it isn't done until the last second right before the attack. Is it possible? that someone told Woods and Doherty to illuminate the target 
knowing that it would expose them and that the gunship wouldn't fire on the terrorists? I would say yes. People in the CIA, State Department, and Army would have done anything for Obama. Oliver Hazard Perry defeated the British Army on Lake Erie on December 13, 1813. His telegram was legendary. We have met the enemy, and they are ours. Cartoonist Walt Kelly turned it on its head. We have met the enemy, and he is us. There's no bottom for the Democrats to hit. I mean the leadership and the lackeys like Susan Rice, but their hubris brought them down. After Trump is re-elected and the GOP retakes the House, the Democratic Party Democratic Party, as it is, will cease to exist. What will happen to the Americans who committed so many unforgivable crimes? I don't know. But neither do they. And that's what eats at them. Not guilt. Fear. Fear.